Welcome to the Master's House. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. Praise the Lord. Amen. Moving quickly, John, the first chapter, beginning with the first verse. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the word was God, and the same was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by him, and without him was any, not anything made that was made. And in him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. 
skipping down to the 14th verse. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld the glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And skipping on <laughs> to Psalm, the 90th chapter in the second verse. Before the mountains were brought forth, and even, or even, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the worlds, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. I have one simple thought today, and that is there is no other. For before the beginning was an omnipresent, all powerful, all knowing spirit. And then in that beginning, God spoke a word and the world and time was created. And that great eternal spirit, God Almighty, began to move into the world and create things. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. It was the word of God. And that's what I want to talk about just briefly. That word, that same spirit, that same God is in all and through all and with us all this day. There is no other Savior Besides that omnipresent spirit that was at the beginning, there is no other Savior than that Almighty God who was even before the beginning. It was the same God that is here today that has come to do a special work in our lives today. If we will just let Him have His way, what cannot be accomplished by the Spirit of Almighty God? He spoke and the worlds were created. He spoke and all things were made. He can speak today in and in behalf of our lives. And who can say what God cannot do in the lives of us today, especially because he is so good and so wonderful to each and every one of us. He is that very reason for the season that the children sung about and spoke about. He is that great, awesome, and wonderful spirit whereby all things were created and all things can become new if we will just let him have his way today. Blessed be your wonderful name, Jesus. In Luke, the first chapter, begin with the 27th birth. To a virgin is spouse to a man that was named Joseph. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came into her and said unto her, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast her mind at what manner of salutation this be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and shall bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. And he shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then Mary said unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also this holy thing that shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaiden of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. In Matthew, the first chapter, beginning with the 18th verse. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when Mary... When, when, as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband being a just man, not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But when he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken, by the, spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from his sleep, as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, took unto him his wife, and he knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and they called his name Jesus. In Luke, the second chapter, in the fourth verse, and Joseph went 
up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea and unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there and the days were accomplished that she had been delivered, that she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in that same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring to you good tidings of joy, which be unto all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Amen. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Glory to God in the highest. The highest glory of that omnipresent spirit was manifest in flesh, and his name is Jesus, and Jesus came to save me from my sin. There should be joy unspeakable and full of glory in the house of the Lord today. For that great God of heaven and earth, the everlasting God, he is outside of time and creation. As the word, he is God inside time and creation. As the son of God, he became flesh and his name is Jesus. The God outside of creation is the same God that is in creation. That same God is in Christ reconciling the world back unto himself and his name is wonderful his name is counselor his name is mighty god his name is everlasting father he is that self-same spirit he is that self-same comforter he is that self-same holy ghost he is the spirit of christ that fills us all today he is god in all and can be your all in all today that is jesus the Savior of the world. That is that omnipresent spirit inside creation and outside of creation. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I don't know why it is that sometimes in my limited capacity, I try to explain who God is by limiting who he is by my small mind that I want to put him in a box and I want to explain him away and I want to give him characteristics about persons and human uh, characteristics that don't even qualify qualify my God. They don't even quantify who my God is. That same God is here today. And I want God to have his way. I appreciate everybody. I get loud visitors. I get excited about the goodness of the Lord, and I get loud. There is no other God like my God. There is no other who wanted to make a way where there doesn't seem to be a way. He said in his word, You are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe and understand that I am he before me. There was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. It is the same God, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all that's in you all. I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no other Savior. There's only one Savior today. There's only one God today, and Jesus is his name. I have declared and have saved. I have showed when there was no strange God among you. Therefore, you are my witnesses, saith the Lord, that I am God. Yea, before the day was, I am he. And there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work and who shall let it? For thus saith the Lord, King of Israel and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first and I am the last. That great almighty spirit, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, is when that almighty spirit created all things. That's when time will be no more. That shall be the end. Amen. And that omnipresent spirit will be from everlasting 
to everlasting. I am the first and the last, and besides me, there is no God. And who, as I shall call, shall declare it and set it in order for me? Since I appointed the ancient people, and the things that are coming shall come, let them show unto them. Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have not I told you from that time? Have not, has not God declared it? Ye are even my witnesses. There is no God beside me, yea, there is no God. I know not any. I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I gird thee, though thou hast not known me. They that have known me may rise from the rising of the sun and from the west. There shall be none besides me. I am the Lord. There is none else. Look unto me, and be ye saved. All the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is none else. Praise your wonderful name, Jesus. As you're standing in the house of the Lord, I gotta be quick. Lord, I lost my place. Isaiah said in the ninth chapter, in the sixth verse, For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and justice from henceforth forever. The zeal of the Lord will perform this. When you think of the name, the name is wonderful. The name is counselor. The name is mighty God. The name is the prince of peace. The name is anything that you can name. He is the father. He is the son. He is the Holy Spirit. And he is a far above any principality and power. Far above any might. Far above any dominion. And every name that is named. There is no name greater than that name that he has been given. Not in this world. Not in the world to come. But it is that perfect name. And he has put all things under his feet and gave him the head over all things, which is the church, which is the body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal to God, but in himself made of no reputation, took on the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. And found in fashion of man, he humbled himself and became obedient even unto death, the death of the cross. Wherefore, God hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every other name. And it came to pass, which was a name above any other name. And that wonderful name is Jesus today. Jesus is the only name I need to know. He is the only God. He is the only Savior. He is the only healer. He is the only deliverer. He is the mighty God. He is the everlasting. He is that great eternal spirit before the beginning. He is that great God at the beginning. He is the word. He is the life. He is our healing and our deliverance today. If we will submit and call upon the name of Jesus, There is no telling what God can do.